Hey YouTube, it's Edmagician34, and I've got a deck I call Grand Theft Frog, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. It runs two Treeborn Frogs, obviously, and we run three Swap Frogs. This guy's good special summon bait, and he uh, obviously ditches Treeborn Frog and running Toadian into your grave really quickly. Um, he can also be useful for making some rank 2 kind of stuff. We also run the one copy of Ronin Toady, and he's just a good uh, come in, synchro tribute fodder kind of guy. Or not synchro, rather, but uh, Ixies, you know what I mean. Uh, we're also running three copies of Tour Guide to the Underworld. Okay, that, that those, don't, those don't look very much like Tour Guide to the Underworld. Epic Dawn wasn't out as of when I made this video, but it's just about to be, so she's about to be a lot easier to get. And uh, if you squint really hard at these, actually, and you look away from your computer screen, then they kind of look like tour guides. But anyway, we run three copies of Tour Guide at the Underworld. Uh, which helps us get some darks into the grave and make some rank threes. And it also helps us get the all-important Sangian out of our deck. That's the primary purpose of Tour Guide, actually. We're running one copy of Gores, the Emissary of Darkness. Uh, we can have a clean field a lot in this deck, and that's fairly obvious. Gores is a great way to take advantage of that. And unlike in some other decks where it may be kind of obvious that you're baiting for Gores, in this deck, a lot of times, it can be pretty unexpected. Uh, if they warn you at a good juncture or they dark hole you, you don't have any field. And so it's hard for them to tell whether or not you've actually been setting them up for Gores. Speaking of which, this deck's good at generating a uh, good number of cards in your hand, actually. So Tragoidia, in many cases, can be uh, just as powerful as Gores out of your hand. Okay, almost as powerful. We're also running three copies of Battle Fader. This also helps take advantage of the fact that sometimes we'll have a clean field and our opponent may be trying to make a big swing right through us. That's kind of how the format is right now. Battle Fader is very unexpected because he's not run a whole lot. And the common answer to monster effects like his is Effect Veiler, of course, which doesn't work on Battle Fader. So um, this guy's also a good tribute fodder. He can do a number of other good tricks. We're running two copies of Cyber Dragon as well. It uh, Okay, it's, it's a little counterintuitive. But the thing about this deck is you sack off your frog a lot during a main phase and find yourself still wanting a monster. This is also a light monster to help you get out your BLS. Um, you can also tribute off monsters you stole with Econ and things like that and gives you all kinds of cool um, options. And so in my playtesting, I found him to actually be pretty useful. Try it for yourself and you'll probably agree. We're running three copies of Kai's the Shadow Monarch. He's our only actual tribute monster in the deck in the truest sense. Um, but he's the only one you really need, and Ryza right now sadly isn't that great. And a number of the other monarchs are kind of falling short just because of what's popular right now. But this guy is still absolutely just pretty much the best one tribute monster you can get for frogs. We, of course, run Blackluster Soldier, Envoy at the beginning, and he does have a combo with a card that comes up a little later that's almost a guaranteed OTK. Um, but, of course, he's just so powerful by himself. Another unexpected card that combos well in this deck is Lava Golem. We're running lots of ways to steal things from the opponent. That's uh, part of the theme of the deck. Lava Golem is an answer to everything. Uh, rabbits can be problematic for you, and this guy stops them cold. And Chaos Dragons also don't like him because he gets around uh, Light Pulsar Dragon, and he's a good answer to Darkness Metal. Um, and he's a good monster to steal from your opponent, too. Uh, our last monster, or monsters, are two copies of Effect Veil. It's just a good control that helps your opponent from going too crazy during their own turn and upsetting your control. This deck looks like it's playing slowly, but in reality, your opponent kind of has to make the first move, and then you take advantage of what they do. So Veiler helps keep them from going, you know, once again, getting a little too out of hand. Uh, played judiciously, it's very good. It's also your only tuner. We're running three copies of Creature Swap. Summon your Battle Fader in attack mode, obviously, just for this. Um, it's a great way to swap Frog for things, swap Battle Fader, swap basically all the tiny monsters in the deck, even swap Frog. Um... This card is so useful in this deck, it's not even funny. Um, you have to play it a little carefully and play it smart, and uh, it's definitely useful in combination with enemy controller, which can help manipulate the field so that you get exactly what you want. And also, of course, this is a free brain control treeborn frog, so it's kind of a no-brainer. And the other cool little card we've added is from the new set. It's called Mini Guts, and we're running two Mini Guts. Um, for the record... Mini Guts is tribute one monster you control, one of your opponent's monsters goes to zero attack, and then if it's destroyed by battle, they take damage equal to its original attack. So this thing is just huge, huge damage, basically. Um, you sack your frog, your fader, or whatever, your extra monster, it's very easy for you to generate lots of extra monsters. 
run over their thing, they take damage for whatever ran them over, so like 24 off Kai's, that's 2400 damage right there, plus whatever their attack originally was before they got shrank. Um, so it almost always takes like about half their starting life points. Very good, very useful in this deck. We also run one copy of Monster Reborn. One copy of One for One, uh, basically just get Treeborn Frog. Dark Hole, it's kind of a no-brainer in most decks these days. Heavy Storm. Two MSTs, we don't really need that, that third one, but you could try flexing into a third one for your variant if you want. And lastly, one copy of Pot of Avarice, a good way to cycle you know, the Caiuses and any Ixies monsters back into your deck. Helps you get those uh, tour guides are really good with the Avarice, obviously, too. And the extra deck is one copy of Stardust Dragon, one copy of Scrap Dragon, one copy of Black Rose Dragon, one copy of Ancient Sacred Wyvern, remember, our only tuner is light, Brianac, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, Ally of Justice Cataster, and we kind of have to hit every level for Synchros because uh, we're stealing monsters from our opponents on a regular basis. Uh, Formula Synchron, because uh, this is basically Battle Fader plus Valor. We do run one copy of Maestrook with Symphony Gin. Basically, you steal from your opponent enough that you can, and I found in playtesting uh, that I was actually wanting a rank 4. And at the time in my playtesting version, I hadn't had the rank 4, and I really was missing it. Um, basically, you steal two uh, level 4 monsters from your opponent by, like, Econ and maybe a creature swap or two Econs. And you find yourself not wanting to surrender them back to your opponent, so you instead Ixies them into this guy in the second main phase, probably in defense mode. And um, he, he's the best choice, um, basically because if you do it in main phase one, you can switch positions on your opponent's stuff, and in main phase two, he stands a good chance to be around for another turn, making him a little more useful. Rank three is mostly what we're going to be going for, and it's Zen main, uh, Levier, Tem Tempo, Acid Golem of Destruction, because this guy is uh, awesome to creature swap to your opponent if they don't kill him, but I find that he usually dies so fast his, uh, his drawbacks don't even matter. Number 96, Dark Mist. He's uh, actually pretty easy to summon. Thank you, Running Toadie. Gotcha, gotcha. And last but not least, uh, we also run Galaxy Queen. Um, and this is basically just your Battle Fader plus your Treeborn Frog that came back and any level 1 you summon out of your hand. Um, and she's really good because she turns all your monsters into uh, Marshmallows, essentially. So um, she's actually pretty nice, and she can be good at the stalling factor, and stall is a lot of what you do, trying to set up for your big plays and steal your opponent's stuff, um, and even burn to death with Lava Golem. Um, point of the deck is it's, um, it's very useful at using your opponent against themselves, and since uh, the game right now is very focused on people summoning big powerhouse monsters, um, it's, it's fun to steal them and take advantage of their own good plays. Uh, but still have a few options of your own in case they don't initiate things. So, it's a cool deck, very very playable for locals, and you could even take it to a regional and do quite well. I encourage you to try it. And until next time, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and check out my channel for more gaming content.